Hi, this is Julia Witta with Talk Story Media, and we are doing an interview for the Shamanic Arts Center with Lorelai Shamayo, who is an intuitive eye reader. Can you do that over the internet? Oh, I can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, tell us more about it, Lorelai. Sure. Well, I think that we all read eyes all the time to give everyone a sense of what that is. So if you imagine when you meet someone, when they're wearing dark sunglasses, uh -huh. you can't see their eyes. There's so much missing. And as soon as you see their eyes, there's so much that's there. I think that our brains naturally pick up so much about each other through our eyes. Mm -hmm. That's why the phrase eyes are a window to the soul. Correct. Yes. <laughs> so I use a set of archetypes to describe what I see in people to describe our soul, our essence, like our natural gifts and talents, like what we can't help but share. So people have a way of more deeply honoring themselves and making choices that support them doing that. Wow, what do you mean by that? How would you, you can't choose what your eyes reveal, can you? We can't choose, however, we can choose who we interact with for different things, how we interact with people, and then also, um, what choices we make and what, what we do and where we do it. Mm -hmm. So like what kind of work is a great fit for us? What is expressing our purpose? Right. What is a workplace with people that see us and get us and want us to share our gifts? Mm -hmm. And I use it for matchmaking and dating and helping people improve relationships also. Very cool. <laughs> I can share a little bit about what I imagine from your eyes and see okay. how that resonates for you. Okay, go ahead. So I imagine that you feel, that you feel emotions deeply so big waves of emotions when you're younger and that you naturally see not only what's here, that you also see what's possible and you love to inspire and motivate people to stretch and reach for what's possible. Does that make That's sense? true, yeah. <laughs> so I, I use a map of seven talents. I describe people as having three and that's one of yours. It's called priest or priestess. So it's about inspiration, vision, passion, motivation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I also imagine that you have a talent that's called scholar. That's about absorbing information to create a map of knowledge and share yeah. that knowledge with others. How can you tell that? Well, so when I look at your face, I feel some intensity in your eyes, but it's a gentle intensity. And the gentle intensity could come with growth if it's your first talent. Or if it's your second talent, it would be where, let me say, if it's the first talent for someone, they see out of themselves. They see all these ways that things could grow, that people could grow and things could be better. And so there's an, uh, an energy that comes widely out of the eyes and the irises, the colored part of the eyes are actually tipped outwards. And when I look at someone that has this, even when they're looking at me, it's like their eyes are seeing past me and seeing the great possibility that I could become. So when you look at a photo of someone, right? It's when they look at you, it's like they go past you. So your eyes have some of that quality that's huh. softer. So it could be where you've softened with time and instead of in the beginning, like wanting to push to make it so, it becomes a, a gentle trust of yeah. what will be will be, right? And creating a context yeah. for what's wanted to emerge. Okay. When it's the second talent, while well, people want to be good and their impact in the world, they turn a lot of it inwards and they tend to be harder on themselves, seeing the potential in themselves of like, oh, I need to grow, I need to be better, I need to be do more. Yeah. <laughs> so if it's been a lifelong lesson of being harder on yourself, then it would be that it's second. And if it's, it's directed mostly outwards, you've softened with time, with maturity. <laughs> well, let's hope we should all do that. Right. That's our, our opportunity, right, is to grow and, and be the best, the mm -hmm. best that we can, right, to allow right, the energy of who we are to express in the most, I say, like, gentle in flow way. Right. So I have, yeah, lesson journeys about all this, too. Okay. And how can people get a hold of you if they want to get a reading like that? There are a couple of places. So there's a general website on me called lorelishmayo.com. It's L-A-U-R-E-L-I-S-H-I-M-A-Y-O.com. And then also all, all the archetypes that I read in people's eyes. I call them thrive types, archetypes for thriving. They're at thrivetypes.com. So that's T-H-R-I-V-E-T-Y-P-E-S.com. Let's put that in the chat, too. Yeah, sure. I can put that in here. And um, so I was just describing one type of characteristic that I recognize in people. 
I was describing talents and I described two of yours. Two, one yes. was seen what could be and what was the other one? Priest Priestess is about vision. It's about seeing what's possible, okay. wanting to encourage and inspire what's possible. Okay. And then scholar is about wanting to understand. So it's about absorbing okay. information to make a map, create okay. knowledge and share knowledge and wisdom. Okay. All right. Yeah. And how did you get involved in this? Do you remember when you first got involved in this type of work? I do. Yeah. yeah. So it's like to touch back, like where it might've started inside me is uh, I remember as a teenager, I wasn't raised with any religion. And I remember I was starting to study biology and consider becoming a biologist. And the idea that we're completely created from our DNA just made no sense to me. I remember having this experience, you know, looking at people and like, I feel so much more of uniqueness of people than is explained. And I think the way I was sensing and feeling people was based on their eyes. So, you know, part of my pathway of how I might have gone this route. But I, I went a completely different route. I was a scientist for a while. I did legal work. I worked in business, all kinds of different things. Uh -huh. And my desire to understand people, you know, really my interest, my fundamental interest in biology kept emerging. And instead of going to grad school for psychology, I found a teacher that had learned some of this work, learned from others, where it originally comes from two channeled approaches. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. So your teacher, what was your teacher's? title when you met him or her? Um, he talked about it in terms of alignment and helping people find a higher alignment. Okay. Um, it comes from the Michael teachings and from Alice Bailey's writings in Theosophy. So an example in that work, if one finds something called seven rays, Alice Bailey described two types of seven rays and one of them matches exactly with the seven talents that I describe in people. Ah, okay. Yeah. Huh. And who was the other person? This is interesting. I'm going to look some of this stuff up. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I'm happy to give you links for, okay. for all those things. All right. So Alice Bailey and the Michael teachings are the two sources that I know of. The Michael teachings uses some of the same language for describing people. My understanding is that the way that information is obtained is someone looks at a photo of someone and the information arrives. Right, so a form of clear cognizance or channeling. Oh, and, okay. And I was a scientist, so I read a little differently. I may read some of those ways as well. I look at someone or a photo or with someone in person, and there are very specific physical properties that I look for. Like for the talents I mentioned for priest priestess, the irises are actually, they, they stretch outwards and they're water, like they're angled outwards. There's uh -huh. another talent called server that you might have that's about love and intimacy and deep connection. And the eyes actually tip inwards, like to one person's heart. And then the scholar eyes, they're parallel and they pull inwards, whereas priest and server, the energy goes outwards. Okay. You know, so out this way or this way. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so. And here, I'll put in here the seven rays too. Okay. Alice Bailey's the seven rays. And the Michael teaching, where would you see those anyway? Michael's such a common name, I don't know. Is that no, funny? here, I can grab a link for you. I know. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. There's a link. It's right here. I think this, I, I don't recognize the site, but I think this is the same thing. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. It's just a modern version of the site. Yeah. So some of the traits that I read in people are, are the same or very similar to that work, but the process of reading is so different. So I use the combination of things. I look for very specific traits in people's eyes, and that's very teachable for people that have more of that scientific approach. Mm -hmm. I also encourage people to, um, as they want to learn, have me work with them to get a reading of all the people in their history, their family, friends, exes, and by recognizing how they feel emotionally when they look at those kinds of people, they can now develop an emotional map in their body, kind of a feeling emotional map and sensation map so that when they look at other people and have similar emotional feeling responses, they can say, oh, they're like that person. And they might be able to recognize the patterns that way. Ah, wow, that's fascinating. Very fascinating. What is it called? Just I, I just call it, Thrive types are the archetypes, and then I call it intuitive eye readings. 
So because I'm, I'm looking at specific physical traits, I'm using my history and my sensations, feelings, my body map. And uh -huh. then I do some form of intuiting also in that it's so like when I look at someone, I can see what's, what's most likely true of them, but I also get flavors of their history kind of floating in there. I can see aspects of their family and other caregivers, parents usually, and caregivers. Mm -hmm. And my job is, I think of, is to sort out like what's true and what's their influence. I call it masking. It's like putting up a false mask. Mm -hmm. So everyone needs to get love and attention when they're little. So we take on the needs of the people around us like whatever they want us to do so that they, they want to be around us more. Right. So when I do a full reading of someone, I'm often getting photos of parents and caregivers so I can say, like, oh, okay, that's that influence. So kind of subtracting that out from what I see in people. But what, what I don't understand how I do is I can feel backwards, like into what it might've been like for them growing up. And I sense more of their history than I know how to explain. Exactly. Wow. Could you read a baby? I can read babies, but there's a journey of growing into what's authentic. And so the order of things might not be quite right in a baby. And I've not tested myself with enough to know that I'm how accurate I am. As they how grow up. Babies <laughs> yeah, so I see things, but I've even can see in utero now because the images we get, you know, the, the scans, the eyes aren't open, but I can sense the energy. So that's an example of where it's not just eyes, right? There's so many other things I pick up. Wow. Or, I give you some other flavors too. So one of the talents is called SAGE. It's about community, communication, playfulness, and fun. People with SAGE have great rhythm. So if I have someone with SAGE and someone without SAGE walking down the street, the person without SAGE might be just going, dunk, 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 dunk. And the person with SAGE is like waving down the street as they walk. So they go next to each other. And it's like just so obvious from the back. Or um, priest, priestess. And know has this upward kind of, you know, reaching the highest sort mm -hmm. of flavor of it in the body. And it's considered a more feminine trait. So typically men are not encouraged to express it and it gets tightened in the body. And so there's like an upward stiffness. So when people have an upward stiffness in their body, you know, and I look for the expression in the eyes as well, it can be a way that priest priestess shows up. Huh. Wow, this is fascinating. Do you have a course or anything like that? I do. I have a course where I teach people to read the seven talents and I go through things like what I've described of all these different ways of recognizing any people. Cause it's like, we all have different love languages. We all have different ways of learning. So I give like lots of different access points so people can find their strengths of how to best learn to, oh, to cool. see it in others. Very, very cool. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, I would love to see you come to shaman's camp and give that, class next year i would love to august 20th through the 22nd all right well I'd mark that off <laughs> in hotchkiss colorado oh, okay hotchkiss colorado it's great yeah yeah let me send oh let me write down the link to that no and i can definitely teach some basic classes but that's it's a, the main series that I use to teach people is about 15 hours. 15 hours. But you could do some kind of a little one hour or two hour thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely could. Yeah. I have little like cheat sheets too. I have little cartoon images with what they look like. And, okay. Um, oh, yeah. cool. oh my God, this is exciting. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. Well, it, whoever's watching this, you can uh, hopefully sign up for her class at Traveling Shaman's Camp next year. <laughs> and if you're impatient, you go to her website and sign up now. Oh, that's great. It's, just, it's so much fun for me. So I have the talents. Like it makes sense in some ways that I went into science. I love solving puzzles. I want to solve puzzles and do something with it. I want to make it efficient and effective and useful in the world. Yes. So I spend my life getting to understand people and help them make choices that make their lives work better. I love that I get to do what I'm about. Very cool. Very cool, Lorelai. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to you being here next summer next august it's the i love to do i was excited mm -hmm. i'm really excited okay thank you for being on our show oh you're welcome thank you so much julia and i'm gonna turn off the oops i guess i have to